consumers already overwhelmingly prefer chat as their communication channel. You know what I mean? Like uh, it, it's like by you know three to one, uh, people prefer communication through through chat. Like people don't even ring doorbells anymore. They they message the person inside. You, you know what I mean? So people already overwhelmingly prefer messaging. It's just a matter of time between before businesses kind of figure this out. And, 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 and I think that time is right now. And I think you should focus here, um, you know, rather than, I don't know, tweaking your, your ad texts by like, you know, an exclamation point or something, you know, like there, there's, there's actual leverage. All right. Hello and welcome to another live episode of The Robust Marketer. Um, we'll just give everyone a chance to kind of filter in here um, from the Ad Buyers Group. We're going live in the Ad Buyers Group today. We overcome a little bit of a technical challenge in order to do so. Uh, but today I am super lucky to have Larry Kim with us. He is the founder of Mobile Monkey and WordStream. Uh, so Larry was already an, an advanced sort of marketer during the height of the tech boom, and he leveraged his performance-focused mindset and his love of ad tech into WordStream and its $150 million exit. So now he's laser-focused on one of the highest engagement channels in the history of marketing, which is messenger marketing, and he's building a company to help revolutionize that platform. Today, we're discussing the rise and exit of his amazing company his vision for the future of messenger marketing and several tactics you can implement right now. Of course, you can catch Larry Kim live in San Diego, uh, February 28th, March 1st at Facebook and e-commerce mastery live for his 40 minute keynote. And uh, as well as during one-on-one -on -one during the mentorship hour, during the, the amazing event, we're super thrilled to have one of our highest profile speakers ever. Larry Kim, welcome to the robust marketer. How are you doing? Awesome. Thanks so much for having me. It's uh, great to be here and uh, thanks for having me at your show uh, uh, this spring. Yeah, well, we've heard nothing but good things. You're sort of, we've, you know, I've been in the performance marketing space now uh, since about 2005, which I imagine is similar for you. Um, why don't you just start by telling the audience a little bit more about your uh, hero's journey in this game? Look, uh, I like like everyone else in digital marketing, you you come into it from something else, right? Because it's it was new. Uh, my background was software engineering, and so I just discovered search ad advertising, and uh, it was it was pretty cool. And I thought uh, <laughs> you could make a lot of money doing this kind of stuff, right? Uh, and and, and um, so I just quit my job and started doing um, you know consulting work in, in, in search advertising, and um, you know because I'm lazy, started writing software to, to automate that, uh, the work that I was doing. And, and um, uh, then the light bulb went off and I thought maybe I could sell that software. And so, so that, you know, sort of became the, the genesis of this uh, word stream. It's about 300 people today. We manage, uh, you know, over a billion dollars of ad spend for uh, tens of thousands of customers worldwide. <laughs> it's roughly, you know, Google only does about 50 billion in revenue. So a billion dollars is, is 2% of Google's revenues. Um, you know, so, so it's, it was a pretty amazing journey over the last 10 years. Uh, we, you know, this, it was, it was challenging. There wasn't a lot of successful, uh, search engine marketing companies and like software companies, like they've all kind of gone bankrupt or, or, um, you know, are, are circling the drain, you know, like they're really struggling, but, but, you know, I'm pretty happy with, with the outcome. Yeah. Is that because they haven't been able to, um, keep up with all the changes within the AdWords ecosystem? Is that like, what's one of the reasons for the success of WordStream versus others? Um, so look, if you look at Moz or all these other companies, um, or, or, or on the on, on this, I think it's specific to Google. Google had so much customer concentration, you know what I mean? Like, like, uh, and they had so much control that it was like really difficult for third party vendors to, you know, make a significant amount of, you know, like a big opportunity, you know what I mean? Um, so, it, it it was just um uh, yeah, yeah just trying to find a niche that where where uh like focusing on smaller businesses google wanted us to f to focus on smaller businesses so so that's where where we we focused and they thought that was very helpful um you know you, you just got to play by the rules kind of thing you know they they like people who 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 do what they they want you to do and they don't like people who do stuff they they say not to do. You'd be surprised how many companies you know they say don't scrape, but they <laughs> but they scrape the heck out of Google. You know um, that kind of nonsense. 
Yeah, no, I know exactly what you mean. I've been in the affiliate game long enough and I've, I've actually, you know, I, I'm ashamed to say earlier in my career, I have, I have run afoul of the big G, uh, you, you know, during those times where you're trying to push that envelope, which is always a delicate balance in the performance marketing space, but ultimately using that as a Bible to like, just don't do what they say not to do. I think it's probably pretty good advice. Yeah, that, that was the key to success. You know, like if, if you have them on your side and you're the, you're the best friend, then great things can happen if they're, you're in their crosshairs. Uh, you know, there's, there's no way to be successful. Yeah. And building out the, the, the part of their market that they're really interested in, which is that local space, extending their reach yeah, through to yeah. these businesses that might look at an AdWords terminal and think of it like a fighter you know, a fighter pilot's cockpit. Yeah, so they, they, they realize that, you know, this is not easy. And, and um, uh, I, w I was able to show them data that showed like, you know, if, if I bring on a, a random customer, they stay on twice as long, they spend twice as much, you know, and it's like, you know, four times more uh, value to you. Well, let's be, be partners, you know, that kind of thing. Like, like I, I I could very concretely show that w that was the case for a certain demographic of, of, of customers. Uh, and and um, so that was kind of the, the thing. Uh, yeah. Um, anyways, it makes sense. Yeah, totally. What was, the, I wanted to ask you, what was the most challenging aspect of building a uh, company? Like what was that what, when, when you, before you exited, what was the employee number? And then what was your biggest challenge growing a company to that size? So, you know, at, at Exit, it was like around 300 people. Uh, it's a, it's an enormous number of people. Like, can you imagine, like, at that <laughs> like, I started this in a Panera Bread like a decade ago, and I, I didn't even have a co-founder. And and by the end, we were hiring like you know one or two people per week, and like I didn't even know, you know, 50, 60 percent of the people who worked like for me in my, in my, in my business, you know what I mean? Cause I just, you know, I travel, I, I'm not, I don't know everyone they, and people keep, keep, keep signing up, you know, every, every week um, and, and stuff like that. So, so, so uh, it, it was a pretty big business. What was the other question? What uh, was your biggest challenge in scaling that company? So that um, you obviously have to have to have the right people in place so that you can, you know, so that you don't have to learn all 300 people's names. Uh, yes, of course. Uh, well, you know, it, it varies based on the stage of the company. Okay. Uh, so towards the end, I would say the biggest challenge was just leads, like just getting, you know, can you imagine? Uh, so we were doing about 50,000 leads, like signups and stuff like this per month. Okay. Just all organic and, you know, inbound marketing, that kind of stuff. And then, and then if the, the, the company says we want to grow by 75%, um, well, you kind of need to double that leads and, and, you know, it's easy to double from a hundred to 200 leads or something like that. But, but to go from 50,000 to a hundred thousand, that's, uh, it's, it's hard. So, uh, like per month. Um, so I, that was kind of one of our big, big challenges towards the end was just, you know, scaling lead gen, uh, you know, earlier on, you know, there were different problems, you know, it's, it's kind of like a different challenge every, every, uh, every couple of years, uh, you know, early on it was finding the right talent, you know, later on it was like, you know, scaling the technology, you know, and later on it was like, you know, scaling the services uh part of the of the business so, so it's, it's just like a you know like when you're pulling on a rug and you pull so on one side you the, go. i think we're having like, a little hello can you hear me uh okay i think you're back yeah uh so different challenges along the whole scale of running that business yeah. i can imagine that and you so you didn't rest on your laurels you you sold the company you exited from the company, which I'm sure was a whole, you know, experience on its own, uh, an exit at that scale. Uh, and then, and then, how quick before you you got your hands back dirty uh, into the, your next opportunity? Oh, right away! No, I didn't even wait a uh, wait a day. Uh, we're, um, you didn't even go to Disneyland. No. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but 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 uh, I'm very excited about this new venture. It's it's Mobile Monkey. It's in the chat marketing space. I'm convinced that uh, this is kind of a critical area for marketers to be focusing on. You know, in 2019 and beyond. I think that email marketing, you know, kind of sucks. You know, like in terms of their open rates and del and delivery rates and and and, and all this stuff. Um, click click through rates uh, and and. Um, you know, this whole field of chat marketing reminds me of like doing Facebook advertising like eight years ago or doing SEO like 15 years ago. Um, uh, th th that it's just wide open field, you know, huge potential. And, and so, so that's why I uh, just kind of jumped in here. 
Nice. So what do you think? So obviously it's such a big opportunity because it's like the, an, an evolution. It's, it's like a new, it's, it's, it's not a new medium, but people are using it in, in new ways. It's, it's something like, you know, it, the amount of people that use it on a daily basis rivals Facebook and all these other things. Messengers. More, it, just, it, it, it's more, there's more daily active users on, on messaging than on social media. Yet less than 1% of, of companies have any ability to do like chat marketing, you know? So I think that's crazy. Um, and, and, and basically, uh, it, it's, it's, it's never going to be easier than it is right now. You know, like, you know, how first mover advantage and all that stuff. Uh, and, and, um, so, so I'm hooked. Uh, like, I think this is, this is, uh, people, consumers already overwhelmingly prefer chat as their communication channel. You know what I mean? Like, oh, like, uh, it, it's like by, you know, three to one, uh, people prefer, communication through through chat like people don't even ring doorbells anymore they they message the person inside you, you know what i mean mm -hmm. um so, so so people already overwhelmingly prefer messaging it's just a matter of time before businesses kind of figure this out and and and, and i think that time is right now and i think you know this is you should you should focus here um you know rather than i don't know tweaking your your ad text by like you know an exclamation point or something you know like there, there's there's actual leverage here you know? find that correct emoji that's really gonna <laughs> light things up for your subject well, line they'll, they'll help a little bit but like yeah. you know trying a new thing is is usually more more impact if that makes sense yeah yeah so talk a little bit about mobile monkey and you, your approach because you know with uh with wordstream you 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 you're focused on a market you focused on you know people who, who needed a you know a simplified use case for for the incredible power of adwords what's your what's your sort of angle that you're going after and the kinds of customers you're hoping to attract with mobile monkey you know because it's so new um by definition, no one's ever done it before. And so if you look at the customers who are signing up for this, it's like VMware or, you know, like it's, it's, it's a, it's a long tail of like enormous, you know, fortune 500 customers, but also like an enormous number of kind of smaller businesses. It's, it's just all over the place. Um, you know, because no one, no one's doing this, you know? Um, yeah. So. So, and because it's the wild west, because people that, you know, a very few percentage of people are flocking to it and the ones who are, are, are doing a lot of, you know, uh, testing and, and running whatever they're probably trying to transfer over some of their email marketing techniques, but not all of them. Like what are some of the big mistakes that you people that you see people making with messenger marketing now? Well, so, uh, you know, emails are like these long, like things that you, they, they send you, uh, you know, you gotta be brief. It's usually like one sentence and then a few emojis or something. So really, really short stuff. And then short messages and then have the user engage, like have a button or something like, you know, tell me the secrets. And then they you push the button and then you give them a little bit more information, you know, like, like just, you kind of, so one is the format, it's, it's shorter form. Um, another one is the, the, the follow-up frequencies. So like with, with email drip campaigns, like it's typical, like to put new signups into like a seven day or 30 day drip campaign. You know, um, what I find is you, you just turn those, uh, days into hours or minutes, you know what I mean? So like, uh, you know, if, if you're doing a Fibonacci sequence where it's like, you know, one day and then another day and then two days, then, then three days and five days or something like this, like just change that to hours, like, you know, one hour later, you know, two hours then three hours and five hours later, uh, because, because that's when they're interested. Exactly. People, and, and people don't remember who they were chatting with, like, you know, uh, you know, 30 days ago or something like that. So just everything in chat, it just gets compressed. It's shorter. Um, yeah, it, it, that, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. How does that work with in terms of because you're only allowed to send one promotional broadcast per day, correct? Yeah. You're only able to broadcast uh, one promotional message per day, but you can have a higher frequency when you sort of have them engaged like that. Um, so what you're talking about is these limits on 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 uh, promotional versus non-promotional, and just uh, so everyone knows, uh, when a contact kind of engages with your business you have the first 24 hours to send either uh promotional or non-promotional stuff like you can send an unlimited amount of back and forth for the first day uh, but but that that hour keeps resetting uh provided that they um 
they engage. Okay, uh, so if they click one of your buttons or, or they reply to one of your questions, um, that that clock reengages. And and so using something called subscription messaging, you can get permissions to to send unlimited amount of non-promotional content. Um, so what I typically do is you just send a non-promotional question like, "Do you love?" Facebook ads, you know, question mark, and with a button, yes or no, okay? And then if you click yes or no, uh, I'll then say, well, I'm sorry you don't like Facebook ads, but you'll, I promise you you'll love it if you take this training course on Facebook ads. You, you see what I did? You, you see what I did right there? So yeah. like, I, I, I sent a non-promotional message to you. You then engaged with it, which allows me to, allows me to send promotional content. Uh, so so it's, it's just... Uh, you know, a little, little loophole, but whatever. Um, that, that's how but, that works. And it really comes down to having that call and response nature to messenger marketing. Whereas with email, you're just going to send a block of text with maybe, you know, if you're good, you're going to have one ask in that email. Uh, and But often there'll be more than that in, in one block of email and hopefully they do one of them. But in this one, you're, you're asking specifically for what you want in, in a call and response sort of. Yeah, so in, it's in, more in, dynamic. And also, it, it, it's how the system works. Yeah, so in email, there's no um, there's no expectation of getting a response. You know what I mean? Uh, but in chat, I think there is an expectation of, of 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 if they ask you something, that you'll be able to respond. And so the way you structure these these communications is not as one big kind of you know offer. You know where we kind of infer. So email marketing, you infer the 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 interests based on the list criteria okay and then you send an offer to that list hoping that they'll they'll engage because you you think they're like mommy mommies with like i don't know who live in the suburbs or something you know like there's some demographics or something like that um in 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 chat what you do is you you actually ask them you 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 you, you, you just say you know how many kids do you have you know <laughs> And depending on how they answer the question, you send them down different funnels. Yeah, so so it's a real different form of of marketing. Whereas previously we would, because there was no form of real time engagement, you know, you had to just uh, make assumptions about what they were looking for. And with chat, you can actually figure figure it out in real time and 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 deliver the right message. Um, if that makes sense. I love that because you're coming from search. You know, you were the, this master of, of, of search and, and your platform did the same. And search is the highest intent sort of kind of, of outbound marketing uh, that there that there is, I feel like, <laughs> except for this, which is like you're not just you're not catching them while you're looking for something. You're just asking them what they want. Yeah, I, it, I, I think it one up search like so search it. it you know, it just tells you that you're interested in in a certain product, but like even even think like a, a product like Mobile Monkey, like we have a lot of different customers. Like so, so someone searches for chatbot. Okay, great. They they show up to our site. Okay, there's still a lot of questions that I have to ask them. Like, are you an agency or are you uh, an advertiser? You know what I mean? Like, depending on how they answer that, it's a very different pitch. Uh, and then and then you know, if you're an agency, well, then I'm going to be talking about like how you can scale your scale your your business, get more clients, and grow and grow your retainers. Like, if if uh, if you're an advertiser, I'm going to be either telling asking you about like you know are you an e-commerce company or are you a lead gen company or are you an affiliate like there's so many different um permutations here uh so i think this this really does one up search in terms of like doing not just the uh it it, it, it i didn't think it was possible but this actually does uh a, a, an even better job of, of of sort of uh the the intent matching and capturing you know uh for uh, yeah. for 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 top of funnel kind of you know salesy stuff you know so it's it's really great if you once you start uh for, you know spending some time in it and it it feels like so the, the the original question was what are people doing wrong and what i would glean and it's something that i know that i'm guilty of as well is just not not le like leveraging the capability that it actually has to be fully dynamic and fully responsive. Like, I think a lot of people just use it as like a, you know, they'll just use it as something to be like, Hey, buy this, or, you know, just they'll use it in a one dimensional sort of way. And it's similar to the way that email was, even if they keep it brief, they're still just hammering one thing. Whereas you're, 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 you're proposing that, you know, you have this like infinite, almost infinite possibility to have these conversations with people. It's just, dependent on how much you're willing like what's the line with it to be in, in terms of getting too complicated Look, uh, there's, 
There's usually like two or three really discriminating questions that will either uniquely qualify or disqualify uh, one of your target buyers. And it would it would be my suggestion that you, at a very minimum, you know, like everyone knows what they're like. You you, you sell training courses and you sell you know tickets to to events, so you must know that there's probably some geography constraints. There's probably some like you know uh, I don't know. I'm just guessing here. Like they, they probably work at larger companies with training budgets, maybe, um, you know, like, like, so maybe a question is like, how many conferences do you go in a year or something like this? You know, like, there's probably a couple uh, qualifying questions that really, you know, make you either extremely likely or not, or extremely unlikely, like discriminating questions that you can ask to qualify or disqualify leads. And, and, and that's the kind of stuff that your chatbot should be conversationally uh, being used to segment users uh, so that you're not wasting your time manually. This is a way of doing this at scale. Um, you know, so it, it's, it's not only more leads, but also it's kind of figuring out which ones to, to, to focus on, you know, it's way more data, way more, and, and you can use it. Like, how do you advocate? Like, are you a are you a militant chat guy? Like, are you like you should abolish email, or do you do you sort of say that right now that there's really strong ways to integrate both of them? So, email is uh, so we we do both. Like, whenever I do a blog post, I send out an an email blast to the blog subscribers, and I send out a chat last to the, the chat subscribers. I mean, you know, I can get like 10, 15% open rates in email and 1% click rates in email. You know, that's, that's right. uh, but in chat, I can get like 60, 70% open rates and 20% click rates, which is so like, if you multiply those through, it's like a hundred times more valuable than the, the, the chat engagement. So like, uh, you know, of course you can do email. Um, I'm always kind of amused when people are saying like, how do I get, my the con my chat context uh, out of chat into email and I'm like okay you can do it but that's kind of like building a rocket ship and sending it into the past you know because it's sort of you're downgrading <laughs> the the reach <laughs> by a factor of like two orders of magnitude um, but, but, but you know like I'd I'd be more interested in 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 doing the opposite which was you know thinking about ways of of converting your your email subscribers into chat subscribers um, but yeah it's it's just that's how people think right now. So there's been a, there's a few questions here. We'll just say anyone watching live here, uh, we, we're definitely down to have some questions uh, on this as well. And I think there's a lot of people who are watching who are in e-commerce. Um, and so that's, I'm wondering, you know, you're a guy that's all about leverage, about finding like the highest leverage opportunities, specifically for e-commerce. Uh, what are your, what are your sort of tips on how to leverage messenger the most effectively? Is it, is it essentially what you've already described here, which is just making sure you're, you're actually engaging customers to qualify them with some questions and then funneling them accordingly. I can give you a couple ideas. Um, number one, uh, you could, you know, there's these card abandonment chatbots where um, you can configure them so that that if you um, add something to your cart and 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 don't don't buy, you can actually message them back and say like, ah, oh, you forgot this thing, uh, and and uh, it, that's it's similar to like how how they already use remarketing, you know, but except it's it's through messaging, so it's it's a significantly higher um, engagement rates. Um, but there's there's so much more. That's kind of an obvious use case. Um, you know, another one would be just like communication of of like you know new products and and, and new 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 services, new offerings um, per periodically. Um, uh, one of the really interesting things is is in um, in uh, product configuration. So like say you're selling like I don't know scooters or something like this, and uh, you could you could have a sizing uh, a sizing chatbot. So so the chatbot would just ask you like, hey, what's your height? What's your weight? Okay, and then and then, then so like, and 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 when and what kind of design you like? And then and this so so this is the this is the scooter for you. You, you, you see what I'm saying? So like, it can be used for um, kind of a conversational, you know, help me find the the one I'm looking for. Um, you know. They, you you can even use it for like uh, for closing deals. Like you can you can have the the chatbot like like either like Sofamania is is a is a major sofa re retailer and um, you know it, it it does all these kooky things like anchoring where it's just like you know what do you think of this this you know three thousand dollar sectional and then and you know there's a button that says like I think it's too expensive uh, and then and and then then it comes back and says well what about what about this one it's it's regular nine hundred ninety nine but on sale for seven hundred dollars today and so so what it's done it's done is it's conversationally made you think that this is a really great 
deal, you know, because you're anchored on this other three thousand dollar product. Like all the, these traditional sales tactics that in-store brick and mortar salespeople use like anchoring or making concessions like okay yeah you're right it's too expensive let me give you this coupon code those e-commerce vendors can employ electronically through chat uh, and i think this is like something that is really missed by e-commerce people um, because they're not thinking about really what can we do with this technology and how is it how's it differentiating you follow, do you follow oh i totally follow that was huge right there i think i think it's so funny so much of all the best marketing has been you know was done a century ago uh or it was done you know 50 50 60 years ago like oh, okay. and, and to be able to replicate that with with technologies i i think that right there is what most people are missing is that opportunity yeah it, it all if you think about like the the principles of persuasion and, and and stuff like this it's it's very limited what we can do with this kind of like one dimensional you know here's a landing page it's static you know either it's very binary you buy it or not uh, i think what chat conversation does is is it allows us to bring back all these tried and true you know marketing and advertising print principles sales principles and and and, and um deploy them on behalf of your e-commerce store or your lead generation so everyone listen you try it anchoring and making concessions via your chatbot and then get back to us and let us know how it does. We have a comment here saying, uh, I use chatbots across all of my shop rates, post-purchase engagement, and it's even bigger for customer satisfaction rates in automating customer service. That's a cool uh, use case for it as well. Is that something that, that your tool helps with as well? Sure, uh, so we told MobileMonkey um, can automate common commonly frequently asked questions is, is kind of the use case. So, so like, I don't think any of these chatbots are like, you know, at the level of like a Star Trek computer where you can ask it any question and it always has the answer, you know, like, cause they're, they, they feel a little bit more like ask Jeeves, you know, like, that, yeah. uh, like, like a broken search engine. Like, but like, yeah, we, 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 we all, all of these bots, they support that capability. I can tell you how that works. Basically it has to do with answering frequently asked questions. So like if somebody, you know, asks about like, you know, do you have any promos going on? Uh, you could, you could, the bot could recognize certain trigger keywords like the word promo or, or the word like hours or directions or shipping fees or return policies. Like there's usually like keywords, just like in AdWords, how different keywords trigger different ads. You can tr configure the bot to look for certain certain keywords to trigger certain content, okay? Uh, like, like It's basically like a mini search engine. Uh, it's a little bit like AdWords because um, what MobileMonkey does is we implement natural language processing. So we analyze what the user is asking and then we try to do a fuzzy fuzzy match to the, the content that you've created, you know, uh, the, and, and then and trying to correctly answer the the user's questions um based on the 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 answers that you've already provided you know um and and the other thing we do is we we keep a log of all unanswered questions so if you can just you know how it is like these 80 percent of the questions are like you know the same old questions right so so you can accumulate a list of uh you know all the unanswered questions this month and have someone just go through there and write you know simple answers for those questions and then next month you'll have like a you know 70 percent hit rate rather instead of a 60 percent hit rate you know in terms of answering the questions i don't think you'll ever get to 100 i think it's easier to go from 50 to 60 percent than it is the 60 to 70 percent it gets harder and harder because people um it's kind of like those phone Trees, you know, like they can kind of deflect, you know, fifty percent of the of the questions because sometimes I just I just really want to know what the hours are, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but but um, uh, you know, we, I don't think they're like freaking Jesus Christ where they they can like magically like you know answer every specific question or we're just not we there. We don't yet. have general AI yet. So, but it, but it shows you that it shows you the, like the infancy of the technology and, and, and where it can potentially go when, when you do, when you factor in different forms of AI or Bayesian networks, or, you know, just sort of learning, learning technologies on top of it. It's really, a, it's, it could be, could be massive. Yeah, I mean, look, we, we've experimented with those technologies. I just don't think they're, I mean, there's some better ones than other ones, but even the best ones, I think, are are still like a ask Jeeves. You know, like they, it 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 doesn't feel that great. Uh, it, you, know, you know, what's the one that's like a personal assistant that's pretty big that's gaining a lot of popularity? Oh, I don't know. There's yeah. so there's big so in the many. valley. Nice. There's, there's, oh, there's, so, there's, there's so many. I can't. I I don't know. Uh, 
Um, well, for I, now, it still takes savvy marketers knowing the basic principles of marketing and applying them to to messenger marketing in, in, in a savvy way. I am significantly like I'm I'm a hundred times more excited about chat for, as a top of the funnel uh, kind of a lead gen, lead qualification, uh, lead nurture kind of kind of uh, technology. Yes, it does customer service like the the you know, answering questions, but that's mm -hmm. not really the, the, the crown jewel. That's kind of like a, an, a bonus feature. You, you know what I mean? Like, like, mm -hmm. uh, like if you can, I'm saying like, yeah, it'll, it'll, it, we can configure it to, to cut your customer service, ha su uh, customer support stuff in half. Okay. Uh, like we can deflect, you know, half of them. Uh, but I think where the real value is, is like, you know, we can really help you figure out who the customer is and, and, and get them deliver the right message at the right time. And, and, and I think that's extremely valuable compared to just, you know, you know, saving a few bucks on customer service. Yeah, I imagine in some, in the case of some people, it like especially if you're drop shipping and maybe you know you're trying to compete with Amazon in terms of shipping times. Like there could be a, a really acute value that the, that extra touch has in you know while customers wait for their goods, uh, potentially that, that that he might be speaking to. But yeah, obviously the big leverage point is is in yeah bringing people in in a totally unprecedented way in a way in a top of the funnel, but with a top of the funnel with, a, with as much data from them as you're able to to ring. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, so it's there's one other really interesting thing is that you get everyone's information and messaging permissions. So, like, say you're doing Facebook ads, right? And Facebook ads are freaking expensive right now. Like, they're like three for five dollars a click in the U.S. Um, usually, like, if they click on an ad and they go to your website. You know, only like two or three percent of them will actually like buy whatever you're selling. You know, that, that's kind of a frustrating experience because you don't know who they are and you have no way of, of kind of remarketing to them. Like, like you, you don't have a way of like sending them correspondence. Um, and and so with messenger ads, uh, what you're doing is when they click on it, you can send them into your chat bot, but you get all that information immediately. So I get all their first name, last name, profile photo, gender, uh, you know, location, you know, time zone, pro, et cetera. I get all that information. So I, I know who the person was, even if they did, if you, even if they don't buy right now, I get the information and I have messaging permissions. So I can add you to a drip campaign and, you know, like kind of wear you down a little bit and, and, and then, you know, get you to buy my stuff. Um, you know, so, so it, for me, uh, what I've been finding is that it's it's kind of like one of the only ways I can get Facebook ads to work in, in, in 2019, given the high cost per clicks. Uh, what, what this is doing is it's eliminating the the landing page where you lose, you know, 95% of the the users and, and making it... <laughs> what? It turns clicks directly into leads. Exactly. There's no intermediary step yeah. where you, you ask them to fill out some form. It just... The platform gives you that information, and I think that's a. I don't think people fully understand how great that is, because uh, and then once I have your your messaging permissions, I can engage in the psychological, kind of uh, you know, kind of kind of conversational marketing to 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 um, get you really excited about you know whatever the heck I'm selling and and uh, that's your game theory. On there. <laughs> it's it's just you know reciprocity, uh, yeah. you know. The, the, you know, there's if, if I do something nice to you, you're gonna likely you know want to reciprocate. You know, so so I can I can offer you something for free. Uh, yeah, or or there's there's the principle of um, uh, of um, kind of uh, you know congruency, like where you you I say like, are you having a great? Uh, how's your day? I'm just gonna ask you, how's your day today? Can you answer that? Yeah, my day is pretty good. I'm having a great day. Oh, well, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm great to hear. That's so great to hear. But there's so many starving children in Africa who uh, aren't having a great day because of a civil war. Would you be willing to to make a small donation today to make their day great? You know, like you're because you said you're having a great day, you're going to be slightly more likely to want to support other people feeling the same way than if you than if you told me oh I'm having the worst day of my life, um, you know, 
<laughs> then, then you'd be like, uh, <laughs> well, if I'm having a terrible day, why should I care about these other people? Yeah, but you can um, gain those little psychological edges in a way. It, for me, I like. I, mean, I know this is maybe it's narcissistic, but I like you know when when I when I whenever I say like no thanks on something, it's always like I, it's like no thanks, but with an exclamation mark, or it's like you can you can frame their responses as well, right? If you just give them an option of what they're saying, they're always going to be like, sure, I'm in, you know, and they've already they've clicked that and engaged it psychologically. So there's something there as well. Just it, it's just incredible. Like so, you're getting all their information for just for the click. Uh, you're able to then in real time engage them, especially if you're clever in how you do the engagement. Like like not just like blasting them stupid offers. Like that's the dumbest thing you can do. Like what you want to do is really get to know them programmatically at scale. So like have have like a uh, like a kind of a personality bot kind of do a kind of do a number on your brain and kind of figure out exactly like you know what what what, what motivates you and, and it will hit you with the stuff that we, we that it believes will, will convert you uh it really does work um we, we we use it at mobile monkey we use it among you know with our clients and 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 the numbers are just insane you said it get to know them programmatically at scale that's it right there. And it, it, you just have to have that sort of mindset going into it that, okay, this is what this channel is for. Uh, and if you're out there and if you're running e-commerce, you're not running a chatbot, you're not using it as the top of your funnel. Uh, I'm talking to myself also because if we, we've done a fairly rudimentary uh, job. We've, we've experimented a little bit with our last course that we launched uh, with Messenger, but I wish we had had this talk first because I think it would have helped. Like you, you talked a little bit about, about the platform itself, Mobile Monkey, but like what is... Is it what is a, an, an advantage that your that your platform has in the space? What is it the mindset that you come from? Is it like what is it about Mobile Monkey that's maybe different than some of the other vendors that are out there? Oh look, there's like 101 chatbot companies out there. Um, so our chatbot is is squarely focused on you know top of funnel marketing, lead gen, affiliate, like that kind of kind of stuff, like uh, e-commerce. It's 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 really not like if you're looking for a uh, Star Trek computer that can you know automate your all your customer service, like you know go, go somewhere else. Okay. Um, the uh, kind of the core strengths are it's 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 um, or actually my core strengths uh, that is I'm very good at building um, software that's that's like idiot proof. This stuff is like so easy. Like WordStream, the whole pro premise of this software was just kind of dumbing down like the the what did you call it like an airplane cockpit and yeah. just making it look more like Battleship. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <thank> <laughs> Uh, so, so, so just just making this really idiot proof um, because because it's really hard. Um, and 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 um, in terms of the, the technology, um, you know, it's I mean, how much time do you have here? Like uh, the the couple of selling points, like we, we're really big on WordPress. Like so, we have a significant WordPress integration. You know, number one in the world. Uh, we have um, very strong natural natural language processing al algorithms to try to correctly answer answer questions um the, the user interface is, is is pretty easy we think it's a lot less buggy than than a lot of these other products which which we find are you know ridiculously unstable um so i would th those are the couple of the reasons you know, i'd be even more interested in joining us like i i'd suggest like is it like the best is yet to come like i just started this company like you know a year ago and the product just came out like seven months ago um like there's a very very exciting pipeline ahead and 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 um with with uh, integrations and all sorts of crazy new features um that are coming i can't talk about them but but uh but you know just get started with the stuff and, and um i promise that we're going to reinvent every marketing channel that you've ever engaged in, we're gonna create a chat version of that channel, okay? Okay, so small goals. You're gonna, you're gonna, re, you're gonna just reshape the whole face of digital communication. Uh, but it's it's on the horizon. I was gonna bring up the point about um, Facebook announcing that they were gonna be allowing like cross messaging through Messenger, WhatsApp, Instagram. I think Snapchat was included there as well. well I assume you see this as a huge boon for, for what you're doing as well. How did you take that news? Inevitable? Uh well, it's like from my perspective, I just as a as a as a chatbot enthusiast, I've just tripled the tripled the size of my addressable market. Okay, so uh, 
you know, Messenger was already a pretty big opportunity with 1.3 billion act daily active users. But if you add WhatsApp and uh, Instagram, it's closer to 3 billion you know, monthly active users. And and the neat thing about that is you're adding significant diversity here. You're not just adding the same people. Uh, Instagram is extremely popular amongst a demographic of the th under 30s. I'm not talking about just, you know, um, you know, 13 year olds. I'm talking about like, you know, 20, like millennials, 20, 25, yeah. 26, 100, uh, younger, younger folks with, with, with disposable income. Um, you know, uh, WhatsApp is, is extremely popular in, in, um, in, in, uh, in international, like outside of the U.S. Uh, mm -hmm. as well, it, like it's it's the most popular messaging in, platform in the Middle East, in Africa, in Asia, it's etc. Et so so um, so I've just added a ton of diver diversity in terms of reach uh, from a kind of a geographic standpoint, in, in terms of a, a demographic standpoint. It's probably somewhere around three billion people, which is like kind of rivals the ubiquity of email. You, you see, what I'm saying uh, yeah. like uh, like. Uh, you know, you probably have one of the three, you know, uh, and, and at the same time, I've cut the development costs by three. So previously you would have to work with a Instagram API, a WhatsApp API and a messenger API. And what they're saying is that this is all going to be the same thing. Uh, so, so it's like, okay, well, you've tripled the, the addressable market and you've cut the, the development time by three. I think that's very compelling. Um, you know, and, but I already thought it was compelling previously. So, so we're like, uh, we're we're pretty excited. Uh, we saw a pretty significant uptick in in, in interest in, in in our platform over the last you know four or five days, uh, and and I think it's because more and more marketers, smart marketers, are are realizing, yes, this is where Facebook appears to be going. They haven't. Th that was a, a leak. It was a New York Times kind of expose. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, it, it, you know, they, they they didn't have an official announcement, you know, so you kind of have to read between the lines, you know, like and, and, and figure out where they're going. Like, why the heck would they want to integrate WhatsApp with Messenger? Like, really? Would would a would a Instagram user want to message someone on WhatsApp? No, 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 no. <laughs> that that that's not the point. The point is, it's the businesses. The they want to make it easy for businesses to be able to engage with customers, regardless of which Facebook platform they're on. They don't want to have to that, you know, deal with three different Facebook platforms. They want to just work with one. And and, and I'm so excited about this. I, I have one more question just because I'm super curious. We're going to get into what you're going to be talking a little bit about San Diego in, in a minute. Uh, but I just, so one of the things that I, I'm always interested in charting the way China's internet is looking. And, uh, you know, and I, I hear stories about WeChat and, and how chatting in, chatting in China is like a whole other experience because you're essentially not tied the chatting is like a new kind of internet in a way where you literally can be in a chat and then you could go and you could buy a car, you could buy a house, you could like all of these, these sort of like fully integrated experiences that they have uh, with chat. Do you see that? Do you see that as a way that, that our sort of chat technology will develop as well? Yeah. So if you're not, if you're not Chinese, um, please find a Chinese friend and have them just explain to you WeChat because nothing like that, like, <laughs> like no, it's a totally uh, different paradigm. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't exist in the in the West, uh, but it's 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 very ubiquitous, uh, you know, in China, and 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 also in in other you know like South Korea and other you know neighboring countries. Uh, but, but my my point is, um, uh, there. In China, there is no news feed. You know, there's no stupid scrolling thing where you find random potpourri of 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 stuff. Okay, it, it's it's that it doesn't exist. The, the people use uh, they use chat. They chat with with people and businesses, and and the businesses have you know fully interactive experiences that where they expose all of their. It's it's almost like a browser experience. So so they they use uh, businesses in China. You know have a WeChat presence, uh, almost like how businesses in America have website presences. So, so you can order, you know, your 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 lunch through chat. You can order your clothing through chat. You know, you can or you call a cab like an Uber uh, th through chat. Um, none of that exists. Not, it, it it exists a little bit here in, in the U.S., but it hasn't really taken off. Um, and I think the reason is because of messenger fragmentation. So, like, the reason why that took off in in, in China was because there only was one chat platform. You know, like there, nothing else really ever made it. Here we've got like Google, iMessage, SMS. Um, 
you know, all the different, fa Facebook even has three messaging platforms. Um, so, you know, even some old people use Skype, et cetera. So, so, so um, because of the fragmentation, we haven't had that kind of uh, chat uh, platform thing, but but I think that's where we're moving, and, and I think that's that's why, uh, why why Facebook is is consolidating their 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 messaging platforms. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's obvious to me, but like, um, you know, what do you think? I'm just going to follow where you go because you seem to be pretty good at at getting into those high leverage situations and and just this conversation. Like it's like I I think everyone knows Messenger is the next wave. Everyone because then they say that. And they know that they know that there's an opportunity right now, but but people, I don't think people really uh, have have the correct cognition about it that like that it really has these these. Not only can it be exponentially more effective than what you're doing now already, it's where so much of the development will be in the next ten years. Yeah, you know, it's it's like um, it reminds me of those um, stories. You know, like stories like when they finally hit, like they like it's they're more prevalent than than the news feed you know like like it like these it just takes a while and then all of a sudden it's like the the whole thing changes so, so like you, you, you the thing tips you know um we're not there yet we're not there yet but you know could that happen in the next two two three years probably uh, i feel like we're that way in a number of ways in society this a little slight global warming derivation i love the the the, the horse dung problem the horse shit problem which they had in the cities before the invention of the car, they were like the whole cities were choking on horse shit everywhere because the horses were everywhere. They didn't have any way to, to deal with it, basically. And then they invented the car, and then within 20 years, the horse shit problem went away. The smog problem started at that point, but it's like, but we're I think we're at a point in our history where there's a number of these things that are going to be tipping in in a positive direction. I, I think we live in an age of miracle and wonder, even though it doesn't feel like that when you watch the news. Oh, I, do you agree? Uh, I, I I agree 100. percent and uh, very cool. Yeah. Awesome. Um, nice. So. Okay. Well, let's start selling here. So, guys, if you've got, you got to come to uh, Facebook and e-commerce mastery live. Larry Kim is going to be giving his. I, I love the, the presentation of your talk, which was how to be a unicorn in a sea of donkeys. And uh, uh, you know, that was maybe that. I think that was the sizzle line in the actual presentation. But talk a little bit about what you're going to be bringing to the table at uh, Facebook and e-commerce mastery live in San Diego. Look, um, my DNA is is in performance marketing. Uh, I'm the CEO of this business, but I still do all the marketing. Okay, like I'm running the Facebook campaigns and I'm 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 running the chat campaigns, uh, and and um, you know what makes uh, I think what I'm known for is is not just like parroting you know uh, parroting stupid old ideas or cliches like you know create quality content or something you know stupid. Uh, super cliches like that. Um, Content is king, Larry. Yeah. Oh yeah, really? Did you know that? I, I did not know that. It's like really. <laughs> um, yeah, you know, this is just just uh, you, you know what I'm what I'm going to be sharing is um, you know tactics and strategies that that I've pioneered personally. Uh, you know, just from having you know done a million and one experiments and kind of kind of looking at kind of the winners and trying to figure out what 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 the secrets are and um you know if, if you attend the session uh you'll you'll learn a ton about uh, chat marketing and you know we'll, we'll dive into some of the the, the the hacks that we were just talking about you know how to really turn this chat vehicle into like a conversion engine um and and um all the tips and strategies for 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 making all this work and uh it really is a it, it's a it's a big new thing. So, so like, uh, I kind of expect, you know, maybe three, four, 5% of people to, to really have done anything in this field already. Um, but, um, but even, even if you're one of those few people who are doing chat, I promise you, uh, these are going to be new strategies and new ideas that, uh, that you haven't used before. All right. So we're going to cut that, put it in a, in a, in an ad where we're flying. Uh, I just had, I wanted to know if, if are you someone who listens to podcast? Um, you know, I'm. It's only twenty four hours in a day. Uh, uh, I am. I have like a seven month year old and a four month year old, four four, four year old. It's it's hard. Uh, I'm running this business. I I don't. I, I've cut back on 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 podcasts, unfortunately. So that, it, that's it, interesting. That's something that Nick Kuzmich echoed as well. Is sort of a content diet that he that he finds himself on to operate at the level he's on. Yeah. Um, the other thing is that, like, 
I never really use ideas from stuff I've read. I always try to originate them from from scratch because I feel like it, it'll just bias me, you know, towards like, oh, someone else said I should do it this way. Uh, I'm kind of a marketing scientist and, and I, I kind of want to figure it out from first principles, if that makes sense. Um, gotcha. Uh, there's just a few questions that are on here. If you have a few minutes, could we cover a few of these? Or are you on the, on the, yeah. you got ahead? Uh, oh, uh, uh, hang on a second. Um, actually, I Let think. Go. Let me pull it out here. We have the chat programs in China make for some amazing multimodal business models. That sounds cool. Being able to tag and segment people based on their engagement and then exporting those segments for lookalike creation is fire. Uh, that makes a lot of sense. I can see, yeah, using that in, in, in combination with your ads, you essentially build up a profile of someone and then you can pixel them as that on Facebook. Yeah, actually, you know what? I do have to, I do have to run. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, thank, thank you so much for, for having us today and, and uh, no worries. If, if you're able to maybe go back onto the post, um, and when you have a little time and, and maybe grab some of the, the answers to the questions there. Otherwise, I look forward to meeting you in person in San Diego. And thank you so much for coming on today. All right. Thanks. Thanks so much. Have a great, great. day, everyone.